So I want to talk to you how we can make things different, how we can do innovation, and definitely we need to look what, how we can organize things differently. So I would ask you, before you try to save energy, to look at healthy air quality. About 40% of the houses in Europe have mold. In Dutch, it's schimmel. I'm teaching it in, the, in Rotterdam. And uh, the first thing needs to be healthy air. Asthma in Denmark is by far the most relevant children's disease. So when you now seal a building and to save energy, you make the wrong things perfect, and they are perfectly wrong. The indoor air quality in a building is about three to eight times worse than outside urban air. We understand that it's a problem to see outside air pollution. Here, I was, if you, recently I was in Shanghai and in Beijing, and you can see this here. But still, the indoor air quality is worse than outside urban air. Yeah. And because things in the building are not designed for indoor use. If you want to learn just one thing from my presentation today, get rid of a laser printer in your house, because I have, the money which we earn goes into a non-for-profit institute, and we have 1,752 people suffering from laser printers. Uh, because, because when you print one page, you make six to eight billion particles. Uh, and it's nice to look at the greenhouse effect, and it's important as well to do so. But we first need to say what is the right thing. Otherwise, we are making the wrong things perfect, and then they are perfectly wrong. Yeah. So in Europe, we are losing 400,000 times lives, 400,000 people every year inhaling fine dust. So this is about 15 times more than we lose by traffic accidents. And we need to see this, that we need to make healthy environment first. And sure, we can do something to, for healthy indoor air quality, but does it really make sense? I'm looking where these chemicals come from, and it's about off-casing. And one of the biggest reasons what we see is that we are romanticizing nature. So people said, oh, yes, this is a synthetic carpet made with nylon. And so it's off-casing. Every peak is one chemical which is off-casing. But the, the natural carpet has much higher off-casing. Because not it naturally, but because the sheep was not designed to be a carpet. Yeah. And, and, so it's, and it, the sheep is not designed to be red wine resistant. So if you want, if try to make a sheep into a carpet, you need a lot of chemicals. And it's Teflon, basically. So it's covered with Teflon the whole uh, the whole uh, fiber, so you're never in touch with uh, you're never in touch with the wool. You're only in touch with Teflon. Yeah. So the peaks are much higher, and the off casing is much more, and the chemicals are far more dangerous. So one of the things what we try to do is we try to be more efficient. Yeah. So this is, for example, in Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City. Yeah. The whole city is plastered with Accenture telling people how to get more out of the same resource. Yeah. When I was a child, a cow was producing 5,000 liters of milk. Now we are up to 12,000 in the Netherlands. Shall I squeeze another 1,000 liters out of this poor cow? No, I need to ask what is healthy food instead of optimizing the wrong thing. One of the worst things is off-casing from wallpapers. The, these wallpapers lose, lose one milligram per square meter, these washable wallpapers. Um, when you look for styrofoam, the fastest growing peaks I find in, in human milk it, it come from flame retardants, from styrofoam. So can we agree at least that we don't use styrofoam anymore for, for insulation our houses? Because this is five grams of that. And, see, and these chemicals work like strong endocrine disrupting chemicals. And I'm analyzing human milk now, muscles milk now for 27 years. There's not one sample which you could sell as drinking milk, not one. Yeah? And the legal limits for drinking milk are exceeded for several hundred times. And as I said, the fastest growing peaks are the ones uh, from human milk, if, from, from flame retardants in human milk. Still, when you plan to have children, which I can highly recommend, uh, and don't wait till Mr. Perfect is actually here, or Mrs. Perfect, uh, because if, in my generation, there are a lot of people who are quite depressed because they missed the opportunity. It's, you are not that smart as well and so perfect, so don't wait to, till you find another perfect person. Yeah. Uh, but as well, if, if, you, if you have a baby, uh, yeah, uh, breastfeeding is much better than any Nestle milk powder, but for maximum nine months, because then the liver is working. So um, 
Yeah, so breastfeeding is good for the mother as well. She can detoxify herself. Yeah? With one baby, you lose one third of your whole pollution in your body. There's nothing similar for men. Yeah? Uh, but still, scientifically, it's better to, ha to breastfeed a baby, uh, but maximum nine months. Then it's really chemical harassment. Yeah? So let's look where we are. And we talk about recycling, but I'm analyzing a lot of products. And if you take a mobile phone, yeah, there are 41 elements in it. What do we do? We recycle nine of them. All the rare ones are not recycled. Take a, a car. A, a car has at least 40 different steel alloys in it. And what do we do? We make building steel out of it. This is perverse because we lose all the rare elements with it. Nickel, cobalt, manganese, molybdenum, antimony, bismuth, vanadium, all these rare metals all get diluted in a building steel. If you do me just one favor for a project, whatever you do, make sure that the building steel only is made out of iron, a little carbon, and a little nickel might help. But that's it. Uh, otherwise, we are lo losing all these rare elements with it. And there is a copper mill in Hamburg, for example, which makes 600,000 tons of copper. They make four times more waste than the whole municipal waste stream of Europe. Four times more, just by making copper. And it's critical as well. So it's like if you take this nice animal and you make it in, into hamburgers. Yeah. This, they, we call it recycling. This is perverse. And it's critical. I, I, I just came back two weeks ago from Italy, and I'm analyzing the steel of the buildings which collapsed. And I can tell you we find up to 2% of, uh, of, of uh, copper in the steel itself, 2%. When the steel hits more than 0.5%, the steel gets brittle and breaks like an osteoporosis bone. Yeah, so, and, and so there were 20,000 people who died in an earthquake in Turkey. And I found out a bit about this in 99 when I was there to analyze. We found a high copper concentration in the steel. And then the steel breaks in a case of an earthquake. And the reason for that is that the United States are not allowing to make old vehicles into building steel, so they're exporting it. And in 99, there were 7 million cars exported into, United, into Turkey from the United States, and they made one-to-one -one building steel out of it. In Western Europe, we are diluting the, 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 uh, the steel in recycling with virgin steel to get the copper concentration low. But in, even in Italy, yeah, we have higher copper concentrations, and it would be good in a case of an earthquake. So traditionally, we take things, we make things, and we put them into landfills. A baby takes about 5,000 diapers. You can re reduce it by 10%. In Copenhagen, 20% of the municipal waste stream are diapers. Yeah? And, and because we are getting older, the diapers get bigger. Yeah? So just between you and me, Hegel would have said life only takes place between two diaper phases here. Yeah? So you are in the, in the pre-diaper phase, basically, or in the post-diaper phase, depending on your age.